Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the 505 Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Episode 21. 20 is just 20. gone, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. 20 was here. 21 was also here and then had to get it take, taken yeah. down. Oh, oh, so this is 2-2. Two, two. This is technically 2-2, two, two, but... It's going to go up as 2-1. Let's yeah. call it 2-1. We'll call we'll it call big 2-1. Our like pod 21. can officially drink in the United States. Oh, that's great. Well, I just looked it up. It's true. Yeah, There yeah. it is. Nice. There it is. We have a, a really special guest this evening. This was... You're a hot commodity. We're getting a lot of DMs about so this. So many. Seriously. Most requested guest. <laughs> just an absolutely insanely badass creative. I've seen your work for years. I think it's just miraculous. It blows my mind. Even I went and creeped down when you were in the PNW days. So awesome. it, your stuff has changed a lot for like, it's incredible. I love it. I've loved it ever since you were just getting into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Kyle Hauk. Did What's up, guys? Did I do that right? Nice. Yeah, Glad Kyle Hauk, you Come nailed on, it. I appreciate you guys for having me here today. Welcome, baby. Um, okay, I want to start with because you're not from LA originally. No. And Brayden brought up the fact that you are were from or shooting in PNW. Yeah. Tell Pacific us. Northwest. Pacific, yeah. Yeah, we, not yeah. many people know when yeah. I bring up the PNW what that is, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Gotcha. So I'm from an island by Seattle. It's called Woodby Island. Uh, and Seattle's in Washington, for those who don't know. Um, and yeah, it's a very small town. There's probably 30,000 people total in the town. Oh, wow. There's not even like a mall or anything. There's like McDonald's. Jack in the Box, Wendy's, RB. It's just fast food. So where'd you go for the drip? That's about it. Dude, I would have to, I used to not have any drip. Mm-hmm. And then... Which is shocking because you have some of the most, just the most drip of someone I know. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. It's like a shower over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's dripping. It's raining in the forecast. But... Um, it is that, the PNW, you know? <laughs> yeah, so you're right. Nice. I brought it's it with It's rain every day. Yeah, brought the clouds and the rain. The closest mall was like an hour away so i just have to convince my mom back in middle school to take me to go shopping out there and go to h&m and that was my my stuff that was my ish h&m mm-hmm. was a spot yeah it's yeah. still my shit yeah <laughs> oh, so oh. We, can, we can cuss it was my fucking shit yeah, yeah. Well, yeah dude. Uh, it, was, it was yeah and then from there you know moving to la and everything we can get to that later but yeah that's kind of where i got more right. influence where, where did the camera come into play were you like how old were you when you picked it up so and why Yeah, so I actually picked up my first camera very young. Um, My friend and I, we made this company called Black Ice Productions. Sick name. And it's funny because I looked that up later on the internet and it actually was a porn company. Dude, no way. Yeah, so our company didn't wasn't successful enough to really be notable or anything. So that when you look up, us up, it was just porn. So yeah. That's great. Are your names <laughs> attached to it? It's great um, branding. I don't, I don't think so. No, but it was more so just posted on Facebook and it was like, right. you know, mm. um, <laughs> like, like reach out to a company. Like, yeah, yeah, check us out. Yeah, Black right, guys. They're like right. Googling it. They're yeah. like, what is yeah. going on? Like, oh, do you guys, what kind of content do you guys <laughs> forget? Like, <laughs> everything. Yeah. Right. Like what? So the, oh, my first, categories. My first videos were based off like there's these YouTubers Freddie Wong and Corridor Digital and stuff, and so Digital, yeah. I was obsessed with their videos, like action zombies, you know, whatever war movies. Um, so I made stuff like that. My very first video was like a Rambo video. Sick. So that was like elementary school, and, and that's then, just for fun. That was just for fun. I yeah. Love that. Two thousand what? What year is this, dude? I don't even know. Like I couldn't even tell you. 2008 or nine, seven, seven, 2008 okay, sure. maybe. Um, so posted those videos, kind of let it simmer for a few years, started focusing on school, you know, mm-hmm. uh, getting bad grades and that, yep. was, that was my thing. Um, and then finally in eighth grade, I made, there was a class project and I was like, hey, instead of doing a paper for the end of eighth grade project, can I just make a video? And she's like, sure, I guess, if it's good. And then I made like a SEAL Team 7 video. Sick. And it took me so long to do, and I was editing muzzle flashes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was it was crazy, it was really fun. Um, and then fast forward to high school, I started taking more seriously, doing video first. I was just a video guy. And then I showed my video teacher, uh, he was my first video class I've ever taken, I was already doing videos. But I showed him this video and he immediately went and told the principal and it's like, this video is messed up. <gasps> and then I was like, what? why is it messed up? And he's like, you shot this video at a school and there's guns and, and everything. So I was like, what? Like, that's not what I meant. Like it was a SEAL team video. Like it was, yeah. they're oh preaching this. That's the only place I had accessible to film. Right. And it was, you know, it was back in the days where it was a very private local school that trusted everything. And that wasn't the message that was brought forth, but he just didn't like me regardless. And from day one being in his class, I was, 
you know, already doing videos for years and he just kind of had a distaste towards me. And I don't know if it was like a jealousy thing or what, but I feel like I was better than him at video mm -hmm. and he would try to teach me something. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, oh, actually, I'm going to do this way. And he'd be like, oh. And so he ended up giving me like a D in oh, video class. And now I'm doing it the whole time. Oh. So. Fuck that guy. Yeah. That's Couldn't, such, that is yeah. such a thing. Yeah, bro. dude, it yeah. happens all My the time. My high school video yeah. picture yeah. was such a dick to me. Mr. Nelson, dude. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> like, fuck you. I, would, I would make the sickest videos and he would like find stuff wrong with it. I'm like, dude, I've seen your work, bro. Like you've yeah. got shit on my Canon T5i. Yeah, bro. and then and then like there'd be someone else in the class who makes like the crappiest video ever and, and they're like, it up. he gives him an A. Yeah. Because he's like, not intimidated. He's a hater. Like, it's like he, a charity case. I thing. thought he was trying to do like tough love, like make mm, me better, but yeah. I really didn't believe that. I feel like he really just didn't like me. Were you were you, when you got this like bad feedback, was that inspiring to you or were you just like, were you sad? Like give me what was going well, through your mind? Well, it was a mix of like emotion. You know, I was mm -hmm. partially sad. He even had my parents come in and like oh we had a meeting with him. Like he was actually being a, really? a dick. Oh my God. Um, but so that almost uninspired me, but it also inspired me to say like to overcome that obstacle and try to just get better. Mm. And just it also taught me to very early stage to not give a shit what anyone else thinks. Like really, right. like a lot of people are going to tell you you're, this sucks. And then you just, if you like, as long as you fuck with it, mm -hmm. that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. And I've had that happen with my style when I was in my small town, you know, I was wearing these flat brimmed Pacific Northwest P and W, uh, hats, you know, and like all these things. And I've, I feel like my style's changed so many times, whether it's like fashion, photo, video stuff, or what's what I'm interested in life in general. And then oftentimes the beginning, the forefront of that, I'll see a lot of criticism. And then after the stage, I'll see the people criticizing me. They're the ones who then adapt that trend later on. Right. Which is kind of like you're, just, is you're an early adopter. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like to kind of hop on trends if Hell I yeah. like them. So are you going to like Seattle to shoot or like where are you like kind of getting like starting to like get to where you want to be with like photo video like yes. as a career? So. My mom was actually, I was lucky to have a mom who's a photographer as oh, well. Sick. Mm. So she was really creative and I feel like we get along really well, very like-minded. And then my dad was a fighter pilot and then he retired before I was born and became a United pilot. That's sick. Uh, so, you know, it was really, I was very blessed as a kid and um, I was, I really got along with both of them, but my mom and I, we just go take pictures here and there, very casual, nothing, nothing mm. crazy. But so we're back in high school, junior year, right? Um, I was dating this girl for like two years. She ends up pretty much like cheating on me with my best friend. Oh, Jesus so Christ. it was it was tough for me. It was, I was very low point back then. It was like my first real girlfriend. And that being said, I was just sad. And so I wanted a place to escape. So I just started going on some hikes with my buddies. Mm -hmm. You know, we just take the car, do like a 30 minute drive, maybe an hour drive. And the first hike I distinctly remember was the big four ice caves. And I don't know if they're still around because I think we're at in melted. Seattle. So it's like mm -hmm. an hour and a half out of Seattle. And um, it's just in the wilderness. And it's this epic big ice cave. And I went there and took iPhone pictures with my brother and posted on Instagram. And I went from getting like 100 likes to the 200 and then 300 and the next one 400. Then I went to Lake 22, this like winter snow lake and mm. took some more pictures and I was lucky to I wanted to hike with a few other cool creators who were like small at the time but then we all ended up just kind of doing these little hiking trips together mm. and then slowly all of us just started like getting momentum on socials and then from this there is all Insta. yeah this is all on Instagram mm. just natural growth it was really cool time and back was, when that existed on yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but ex exactly and it's just so weird now it's so different but yeah literally I would use some hashtags post a cool picture and it would get seen and then it just started growing and growing and the, as I was learning still like my content when you scroll back to when I started gaining that traction it wasn't that good but I think because of you know it, it wasn't as saturated then and there was right. less to mm -hmm. see so because I do feel like creativity is all about inspiration as well mm. and I feel like there was less inspiration back then for Instagram sure so it was more unique then. yeah totally how did you link with those other creators was that like because could you even DM back then yeah you could DM it, it was it was more so like DM'd one person or they dm me and vice versa and yeah it was like someone with like 1700 followers or whatever and it was we were both at the same level of and of just kind of casual but just yeah. starting we had an mm -hmm. interest in it and then from there they brought some of their friends i brought some of mine and then like sooner or later there's like a random photographer who saw the potential in us who was a little bigger who had like 100k and back then when you have 100k it's like wow oh, yeah. this guy's like yeah. serious so and then 
just kept going and just worked and worked and I loved it so much but like I I guess you could call it work from an external perspective but I was just having a good time yeah mm-hmm. right and then I was just making it a mission like to get my head off of what was going on because I was felt very depressed at the time you know I also worked at McDonald's at the time. I was like, no way. I was literally wow. flipping patties, taking mm-hmm. people's orders, not enjoying my life. Um, but you know, I, I was in high school. My parents said like, if you want to have money to spend on things, like when they wanted to raise me in a good way. So they said that you have to earn it yourself. So I was mowing lawns and then McDonald's. And then I would just call in sick at work and actually go on like a hiking trip and take pictures. No, no way. Yeah. Wow. Were you monetizing your photography at all at the time or was it still purely something you were doing just for fun on the weekends with like your friends? So like it was kind of funny because when I was working at McDonald's and I would skip these trips, sorry, skip these uh, shifts to go mm. on little like day trips. Yeah. Um, sometimes I get like a brand deal. Like I had a power bar brand deal as my first like over thousand dollar brand deal mm. and i just like went on the olympic peninsula which is in the pnw mm-hmm. <laughs> for those of you who don't remember what i said earlier but um yeah so i just posed in the back of my old 2002 subaru outback um that had like two hundred thousand miles on it and i put like little string lights in the back and put a photo of the power bar like power bars right there my feet are dangling if you want to use that in here i don't know mm. you, i could think yeah could we might pop, build up. pop that up yeah, yeah. right pop it up um and then yeah so that was the first one and then from there just kind of some of them started coming in more steadily but that's the thing too that's interesting is like as a high school student it was weird transitioning from like this is fun to this is like actually gonna be a job Mm -hmm. and i saw other people do it better than me where they started selling presets and all that and they'd make like tons of money like fifty thousand bucks Mm -hmm. when they were like young and i feel like i never fully at that age took advantage of the potential that i could have um but i just at the end of the day i just loved it and i was Mm. going going full swing with my creativity so hell yeah so when you were when you're in high school you're working at mcdonald's you're going on these dates or like the weekend trips right how, how old are you by the way i'm 24 turn 25 in two months okay that's great cool. that's a great year 24 yeah. is a great year 97 let's so, go 97 that's a great year um, i'm just get, old as shit <laughs> yeah. you're in 95. high school you're in high school you're going on the weekend trips when did you you get a thousand dollar brand deal when yeah. are you like holy shit I'm going to do this full. I'm going to actively pursue doing this full time. And did you go to college? Uh, I did not go to college. Okay. So it's a funny thing is so that this all started like junior year. So mm-hmm. then like end of junior year. So then senior year comes along and I walk in first day of, of class. I'm already doing this. I'm already making mm-hmm. some checks. I walk in and I'm like, well, why am I here right now? This, mm-hmm. Like, I don't feel like I belong here. I like the first day you like, you're meeting everyone in the class is bouncing all around yep. mm-hmm. and they're like qu- short little periods. And I just did not want to be there. So like I came home and I was like, mom, can I please just like do community college for this year or something? And so he looked into it and I did like little classes. Um, it's like the community college, you got this, you can get the same credits and only go in three times a week. Or and, twice and it's a cheap week. too, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Way cheaper. Yeah. So it's one of those things where I just I did that instead of well, I mean, high school is free, so I was doing that mm. instead of high school senior year. Mm. Um, but I also did get credit towards college, but I didn't pursue like mm. associates or anything. I just from there I was over it. I just wanted to finish up high school and just pursue the photo thing um, because you know college is great for so many people, but um, for me, I just knew it wasn't the route to take. Mm. You know, I took a college tour down in the LA area and that's the first time I saw LA mm. cause my two siblings who went to Biola university, okay. um, it's like an hour South of here. And I had a great time there. It was, a, it was super cool. I know final cut Kings from there and all these, mm-hmm. the, I think Sick. the director who made sinister, um, which is funny cause it's like a Christian college. And, um, it, I grew up on a Christian background and everything. So like, it was funny how even him, he, this director, I guess, made like Sinister, which is like a yeah, horror just a, film. Yeah, yeah, the craziest horror film. Yes, it's kind of cool. It's kind of uh-huh. badass. From there, I saw LA for the first time and kind of fell in love with it. And there's a lot of, you know, cool things going along, going on down here. So. so then you decided to make the move from Seattle. How old are you? Like 19 when you move? Or? Yeah, I moved 19. Yeah. Oh, you know, one last funny story about high school yeah. before we wrap that up is um graduation came along and i wasn't you know going Mm. to classes i was doing the community college thing and um doing photo full time at that point and then i didn't even know like anyone who i'd want to even walk with at high school Mm. for graduation and then visit norway hit me up and they said hey um we want to have you come like pay you to come shoot like for travel agency for visit Mm. norway 
So I flew out there yeah, to the Lofoten Islands. Instead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, way, way cooler. Yeah. Was, Graduating it, high school and yeah. walking. It was great. And, you know, I had my first beer out there. It was a IPA. It was so mm. disgusting. Oh, so, oh. Yeah. I still hate Where, What time yeah, of the year same. were you in the Lofoten Islands? Uh, it was June. It was actually on my oh, birthday, nice. June 17th. Um, and that was before Frozen had come out? <laughs> See, because <laughs> yes. I, I went there, I I went there so. 2018 because I was studying in Norway. Yeah. And I was in there in the winter, luckily, and there was not a lot of people there. And I was talking like this fisherman guy. That just like, that's just what the people are. They're just like a fishing town, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Just with these insane mountains. Oh, you can <laughs> smell it in the summer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can smell it in the winter, too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I bet it's worse in the summer. Dude. But I'm talking to him, and he was like, this is like where I've lived my whole life. He's like, it's a tiny little town. He's like, sometimes we get some photographers because it's stunning. He said, ever since that fucking movie came out, Frozen, because that's where it's like based off of. He's like, we get a million plus visitors in the summer. Really? And, and he's like, we don't have, there's like, you know, it's like the classic picture of like the, the huge mountain with like the yeah. four red cabins, yeah. which mm-hmm. I got to stay in one of those, which was sick. Because it's like in all the On pictures. the water, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah like right like, along the thing. Fire. But there's like five cabins there, dude. Like yeah. there's not a place for a million people to yeah. go. Also, a, a seagull shot on my head <laughs> at that exact location. I was taking photos. <laughs> so windy. You know, just it's, in yeah. Norway, just always just uh, shooting wind mm. out there. And yeah, just I was taking pictures and then <laughs> But what Giant an incredible splat. place to shoot, yeah. man. Oh, it's so fucking What an incredible cool place to get shat on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always say that, you yeah. know. It was worth it. And yeah, so that's the thing. It was so beautiful. But yeah, the, when I was there, it was constant smell of, of like rotting mm-hmm. fish. You know, it, it's drying fish, mm-hmm. not rotting really. Mm-hmm. But it was just, it was really fresh air, beautiful. And like one of the hardest hikes I've been on at, yeah, that, mo- at that time, you know. You get to like the top of that main. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so fucking cool. Yeah. So it was really cool. To I need to go. Day. Yeah, you do. Yeah, definitely. Gosh, it sounds crazy. Yeah, I feel like it. you've traveled quite a bit. That was one of my first like international trips that was sick. like changed me a little bit. And I was yeah. like, wow, mm-hmm. this is sick. Mm-hmm. And then I've been lucky to yeah, go to quite a few places around the world. Um, but there's still so many more I want to go to. Yeah, absolutely. give us a few. Give us a few that you want to go to. Jeez. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I had to pop it in there, um, <laughs> dude. I I want to do more Europe. Mm-hmm. I feel like in Europe I've only been to like Paris, France. Um, I've been to the UK. I went to Manchester and London and all that for visit London. And then I've been to Dubai a few times. And then uh, Iceland recently, that was last June. That was awesome. Yeah, bet. Um, I'm trying to think where else. So have you worked with, like, you did visit Norway, you did visit, you said London? Yeah. So have you worked with, like, these travel agencies, or, or what exactly is it that is bringing you out there? So, yeah, literally, like, normally they would just hit me up on Instagram or email me, hey, like, where did mm-hmm. the one you shoot this travel campaign, like, take photos and also, like, be there as an influencer to, as well. Mm-hmm. So, like, tagging them on socials and stuff to drive tourism their way. But they also like, you know, the duo, I mean, you guys can relate to of like just being a sick photographer and they want to have those cool, unique images totally. that not many people could capture. Right. It's like so. a good combo. Mm-hmm. That's fine. So then you move to go back. So then you move, you graduate, you fucking skip walking because you're in Norway. Way better decision. And then you move to high, uh, LA like right after. Yeah. So it was the end of summer after high school. I was just kept doing my thing and mm-hmm. then decided to make the jump to LA. What's like the tipping what were you you're just like I'm just going to go there cuz there's like After yeah, after you visited, what are you thinking? Dude, I was like I was just ready for a change. Mm-hmm. I was I got to a point with my photography career and everything where like I feel like I was doing really well. Like I was one of like the bigger like travel photographers at the time. Um and like I didn't even realize that though. Like when I was doing it, I was like just taking cool photos and whatever. Right. But like, I didn't realize like, like, I guess the amount of like eyes that were seeing my stuff and like this people would come up to me randomly. Like I was in the mall doing like Black Friday shopping and like people, that's the first time I got recognized. And I was like, Hey, and they're like, Oh my God. <laughs> and my mom was with me and I was still like in high school and she's yeah. like, what the heck? My son, what? That's crazy. And then like going like some hikes and people would see that and yeah. it'd be so cool though. Cause mm-hmm. they'd be so awesome and be like, they would said that they respected my work and they'd be so cool. And then I'd see their work and they'd be sick too. And they'd mm-hmm. be so cool. And so it's cool to see that like, I'm able to inspire some people out there too, you know, cause I had massive inspirations myself. Right. So if I can even inspire one person, that's great. And if multiple, that's even better. Absolutely. Um, so that's also part of what fuels me and stuff. But um and it's easy to forget that too like even like it's easy to kind of forget like the roots where you come from and everything and like at one point you might be doing great and then you might not be doing as well and then you could be doing even better and then even worse and it's this whole like roller coaster Mm -hmm. and you never really feel satisfied it's 
it's never, never a straight, straight line. line. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so ebbs annoying. and flows. Just, I mean, yeah. as such as life, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Fucking, you're always just fucking, you happy as shit and then you're fucking sad as shit, you know? Mm. It fucking sucks. Exactly. But it's great too, you know? And, um, okay, so then you move to LA. What's like your grind? Like you get here and you're like, how are you making money? How you and do you have rent? any friends out here or are you just, you just so, came out? So yeah, I just, I, my brother was in college. He just graduated. He was down here, but then he came up for the summer and then we both drove down in his car and moved in as roommates downtown. So I didn't know mm. where the best place to live was. So I assumed like downtown LA would yeah. be sick. <laughs> sure. I, I moved sure. there, lived there for a year. And my apartment got broken into three times. No, no. way. They stole, I had like two pairs of Yeezys. Um, that Those were popping Yeezys. at the time, yeah. remember? Oh and, God, those were hard yeah. to get, man. Oh, yeah. I was waking up early and getting fucked by those Yeezys every yeah. time. So the Yeezys, I had like an Xbox. I had all this, like these little things. And yeah, they did. I had some like brand deal watches that, oh, they, no. got, that they got stolen. Those were like $200 watches. Oh, yeah. So um, they never found the guys, but I did get some insurance money back. So that mm-hmm. was good. Um, but I moved out of that place. My brother moved to New York and then I, yeah, I just kept doing things out here. I kind of transitioned from like nature travel Mm -hmm. to like shooting more influencer stuff and like musicians and all that. Mm. And then, um, at that time too, like when I first moved here, I was, I bleached my hair blonde because naturally I'm like dark brown. So it's a little uh, lighter than this. And I, I bleached my hair blonde. I lost 30 pounds from just dieting and working out. And I was like, ready to be a new me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've gained it all back. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so anyways, it was it was fun. I was 19, ready to be a new me, I guess. And mm-hmm. like reinvent myself. I was just, I was just overall like the same old copy paste, mm-hmm. nature photos. Totally. Everyone would go to the same old place and take the same exact picture, the same color mm-hmm. grade on it. And it's like, where's the originality? Totally. And I caught myself even doing that too. And I was like, well, what's going on? Like, this isn't actually fun anymore. It was just like making money or just trying to like look aesthetic. Mm. So um, went transition to, you know, something that my audience didn't necessarily like. And, you know, I got some backlash from just people who liked like the travel nature stuff. And then uh-huh. going from there to like just randomly, like here's a portrait of this model. Here's right. like this YouTuber randomly. But like I was trying to make it artistic and experiment. Mm. Totally. But, you know, with everything, like it takes 10,000 hours to perfect a craft. So you could be a great travel photographer but then you try to switch to like you know a portrait Mm -hmm. photography you could suck at first totally so i feel like obviously if you have that basis you're gonna be like pretty good but there's definitely like a learning curve and everything that's how i mean me and chase recently started shooting like two different kind of mediums that we had not shot before he does cars and like now i'm doing the concert stuff and i've definitely noticed like you have the basis of like you know how to take a good photo you know good composition Mm -hmm. you know how to take a good video but there's definitely things that come into play and like, that you learn. You can only learn through experience. Like mm-hmm. technical aspects and exactly. stuff. It's interesting what you yeah. said, and I've had this, because I kind of started, I guess I would kind of say I started with like nature stuff as well, just like traveling and shooting like cool landscapes. I wasn't getting paid or anything. No one even saw them probably. But, <laughs> just like, um, yeah, I shot nature but too. That is like, that's a, but, no, but, but I still get what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I still get what you're saying though, where it's like, it's frustrating because you like go, you like look up the place you want to shoot and you like see the photo and like, oh, I want to go shoot that. And then yeah. you get there and you shoot that exact photo and there's no oh, like, yeah, I know. there's not, and I did that over and over yeah. again and I was like, you know, there's not a lot of like, I'm not feeling super stoked anymore. You, you, you check it off I mean? the list, but yeah. that's it. It's like, mm-hmm. and then like, there's no, like sometimes you get to these places that look so awesome on mm-hmm. Instagram. Oh yeah. And then like you get there and it sucks. It's like, oh, it's my not God. That's so many majestic. places in Bali Temple like and that. Bali. The oh, temple and Bali with the two things, dude. Oh my God. So you get there and you've seen it in photos. Can Dude, pop yeah, my those, thing up. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah everyone so, knows that. So, shot. there's like, you're there's really like making the, me work in this there's, edit. There's like the <laughs> one up all these photos. There's like the green. If you could pop up like a green screen fire explosions. Okay, so <laughs> no then, seriously though, <laughs> it's like the the Bali temples, and there's one person in the middle, mm-hmm. right? Of course, and it looks cool as fuck. Yeah, it looks well, great. Well, it looks well we we like ride our fucking mopeds all Three the way across hours. the island to it. We get up there, we hike, and it's like cool. I'm like, oh, this is sick. Cause we're hiking, it's kind of alone, and then we get up there, and there's just like. Five working guys smoking cigarettes, just yelling, next pose, and like, just snapping on iPhones. And there's just a line like across of just like fat white people. And I was like, this is not what I thought it'd be. And I still got the photo because like I was already there. And it mm-hmm. looks yeah. great. And people will never know how fucking lame that yeah, place yeah. is. Well, so that's terrible. It, Insta has ruined so many places so many like places. that. Well, it's weird too because it's like the whole goal originally is to like drive tourism. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. still maybe is to drive tourism for a lot of companies and countries and stuff. But then at some point it gets to be too much where it's like, can I wish this never happened you know? mm. because then, yeah, you get to these places and there's like, it's just over consumed mm. with just people taking their iPhone pictures or even photographers getting in there. Mm. Like I'm guilty as well for oh, going to these places. Mm. Yeah. 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 Same. Yeah, we all are. But do you, what do you think is the balance there though? 
what is the balance of like sharing you want to get the photo no i know but like what is the balance there of making sure that the spot almost stays sacred but like then yeah. not being a gatekeeper at the same time well that's yeah. the you thing know, there's you know I mean? dude i've like i've run along so many gatekeepers i know this like there's been so many dude there's been so many snobby like photographers that i've met in my day too like i mean dude i was in high school as like this travel photographer and i got like a good platform at a young age and there's all these other kids who are that young age and then people are older too just we're all like meshed together and it really felt like more like high school drama in mm. like the photographer community than it even did in high school which is so weird wow and there's like people gatekeeping and you know there's like a, a, a photographer guy there's a photographer guy sorry about that mumble right there um and then i remember one time my buddy who's also a photographer of similar stature was like yo like what hot spring is that that's so awesome i want to go like to that hot spring too and that this guy's like sorry man can't tell you which hot spring it is yeah man i'm just not trying to like let the location go and my and my, my friends like like what the fuck like yeah, dude, fuck like, this wh- who are you to like yeah you know like oh i didn't spot. know you owned the yeah. hot spring yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah and like he literally just looked it up on google and found it 20 seconds later right. so it's one of those things where like, you know if it's like a more of a sacred place maybe not like put it on blast mm-hmm. this is where i am right yeah. now but you could you could be more you know discreet about it but mm-hmm. at the same time i feel like it is like cool like to share these experiences with your friends or people around the world too in a respectful way so totally yeah there's a fine line between Mm -hmm. between those two so then you start and then how do you get connected with like musicians and influencers when you first move here dude so i'd have some just reach out they'd see i'm in la i'd be posting Mm -hmm. they'd be like oh my gosh i love your pictures let's shoot Mm -hmm. but then sometimes i just shoot dms out and then or meeting people out you know when i first moved here i had my party phase (laughs) that's another thing i want to talk to you about you are in the scene my friend you are out and about all the time i love it he's like yeah man yeah (laughs) yeah, um (laughs) well yeah but like from that um yeah just going meeting friends and like your network just expands Mm -hmm. and i feel like I kind of would even just value going out and just like partying. I was in my party phase. I mm. wanted to just get drunk and see what yeah. it's like. And, you know, I wanted to just do all these things. And it was fun. It was a great time. And you'd meet cool people. And the next thing you know, like a few a week later, like, hey, let's take pictures. I like your photos. Let's do it. And I'd be like, yeah, you seem cool. Let's do it. And then from there, just it worked out. And so I remember like a few years living in L.A., still bleached hair. Mm. I'm like, uh, I remember I was actually interviewing for like a logan's paul videographer thing to f- shoot for him because i had a friend who was originally shooting his videos but that didn't work out and then i just shot like a test video but then all this controversy happened so shifted direction um and then later on i started shooting for the dolan twins for like two years and that was pretty fun um but eventually during covid covid hit and yeah that was that was crazy when COVID hit i just like retreated back home to the island oh wow and that was actually a crazy opportunity too for me because i had like this TikTok that i filmed super zooming like in from my balcony yeah. to like the the hollywood sign and that one like blew up like crazy. everywhere yeah i got like 26 what, what, what lens are you using on that Shh, dude i'm using this crazy like anamorphic <laughs> lens dude it goes 25 jillion miles per hour okay it's um actually this like 600 dollar nikon best buy camera I forgot the name of it. I could pull it up. You can gatekeep it if you want. No, I, I don't need, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'll, I'll tell people. People thought it was a Samsung Galaxy S20 or whatever. Uh, and, and all the comments, like there's probably like comments, like 40,000 likes on this comment. Like, this is the Samsung Galaxy. Boy. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's fucking not. <laughs> like, it's not. It's, it's, yeah, it's just an Nikon camera and it just zooms so far. It's not yeah. a detachable lens. It's sure. Like oh, one, one of those. Okay. okay. So Nikon yeah. does have one purpose. One. We've discovered. And they suck one, for everything yeah, else. Yeah. But they do have one purpose. Every camera they have is a potato except for this one. Okay. Got it. This one's like a, if it's a potato, it's at least like a nice, like loaded. Maybe like a fingerling potato, maybe. Yeah, sure. Fingerling like potatoes one. are great. And you can air fry it. Yeah. It's great. Well, I was thinking more like a loaded bacon. Oh, you know, you have sour, sour cream. Sour cream. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's okay. the vibe. Because um, I've seen, I saw your super zoom of like Billie Eilish and she's like on a crane. It was like mm-hmm. the coolest fucking thing I've ever. I was like, what Thank is you, this, bro. dude? Mm. I thought you had like a 100 to 400 or something like that. I slowly. Yeah. Just, and I thought you were just. Mm. I thought I had the touch. Yeah. I thought you had the touch. Turns out, <laughs> yeah, hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, regardless, so I had that video do well and then I just kept posting TikToks and posting mm-hmm. them. And then my TikTok page started doing well. And I, next thing you know, I had like, 350,000 followers on TikTok, which was bigger than my Instagram. Mm. And I just started doing like fun skits and trends and fun. all that. Um, and then my friend Tucker and I, Tucker and I did the TikTok bachelor where I was the bachelor. And oh, then funny. we were like recruited um, 
Because, dude, I was... This is all go, during the pandemic. This is during the pandemic. Uh-huh. So, like, I'm on this island, nothing to do, right? Mm. Like, all I can do is TikTok or hang on my island. So, mm, right. then there's no mall. There's nothing, dude. It's like, eat, eat fast food. Right. Or make TikToks. Mm. And so, that, that's what I decided to do. And um, we did the TikTok Bachelor. It was so fun. It was, like, on Zoom, Zoom calls. That's and it was funny. really cool. Um, and then, finally, went back to L.A. And is that how started. you met your... Now, girlfriend? No, oh, it is not. Wild. The that bachelor never hilarious. works. Dude. The bachelor <laughs> it never does works. not work. Dude, I can tell you that. Um, but it was such a dude. Also, TikTok kept banning the videos and like deleting them, and like they were getting millions of views. Really? And it, was, it, was, Damn. it was so frustrating. So I kind of got over TikTok and just kind of stopped. And it's funny because then I a year later like came back and tried again, and it just doesn't work when you like go away. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, is it punishes you. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little frustrating, you know. Yeah, why does it do that, dude, dude? Because I think that it just it genuinely just wants you to keep posting on the goddamn app every day as many times as you can. So when you stop, it's just dude. It happened. I had another account that was like doing skits and shit. That same thing happened. I took like two weeks off, three weeks off, and then I started posting in like ten views. I'm like, what's going on? We're getting like ten thousand plus oh, every yeah. time I post. It just like it gets mad. I literally had this conversation this morning with Troy. Yeah. Oh no and way. He's like, dude, I took two weeks off, and he's like, my views are not like what they used to be, mm-hmm. and I was like, dude, that's tough i post like once because i haven't posted in like two weeks (laughs) i hear the best way is like because i would just post it wouldn't do well and i'm like oh i'm just gonna private it maybe it sucks Mm -hmm. you know and uh, that's the thing too is like when we started we didn't start or at least for me i'm sure you guys are the same you didn't start for the number you just wanted to like get make something fun that you liked and then it would never get traction then eventually it would one so what makes what's the issue like if you post it doesn't get traction yeah what is because at one point like a thousand likes was like that's amazing Mm -hmm. and then and then it's like then once 30,000 likes is amazing. Then it's like, oh my God, I don't, if you don't hit that, mm-hmm. oh, I got 20,000. Totally. It's like, what the fuck? Only 20,000. Yeah. Right. But then when you like take a step back and sit in and look, you're like, okay, like this is amazing. Yeah. Even if you have a thousand people seen it or a hundred people yeah. seen it, like that's still a network. It of adds people. up. Yeah, it adds up. Yeah. During the pandemic, you move back home. How are you making bread? Like, how are you, are you like still creating? Like, how are you, I guess, like surviving? Yeah. So I went home for, two months and I was still living my, like my apartment was still, I was still paying for that in LA, but, um, this local hospital. So my mom's a photographer, she was doing some photo shoots for them. And she was like, Hey, my son's up here. He's a dope videographer, photographer. If you want him to like do anything, let me know. So they actually paid me like quite a good amount of money while I was there as well. Just oh, like shoot dope. some hospital videos. It was a more dope. corporate back end mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. But I was like, sure, let's do it. Corporate right. bag yeah. can be quite yeah, nice. Corporate, yeah, yeah, corporate yeah. bags. Yeah. Well, and it's nice too, because you're probably not like it's paying for like crazy. food and shit. Yeah, dude. exactly. Dude, like all those payments was my rent that I wasn't even living at. But right. my parents were like buying all the food. I would offer to pay. I would buy coffee and like go out and sure. like mm-hmm. treat them to things too, because they were like letting me stay for free at their mm-hmm. house. But overall, it's definitely saving a lot of money. because. The did, island price too is like my island's very cheap and mm. you know LA is ridiculously dude, expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even and the gas prices, it's dude. Oh, we're getting right wrecked now, right bro. Now, dude, dude the gas station rocked. in my house is eight dollars. Eight? No yes. way. That's the highest I've ever heard. Where do you it's live? Seven ninety nine. No way. That's right by the Beverly Center. The no. West they're just in Arizona. Way. Guess how much it was in Arizona? Like three dollars and like forty cents. And that's, like, that's high for Arizona. Yeah, dude. The, the guy, the little Uber driver guy, was like freaking out. He goes, "This is insane." I'm yeah. like, "You want to know insane?" Yeah. And he's like, seven ninety nine. Come to L. A. Bro, but that, you just got a Tesla, so it's all good. Yes, sir. Oh, so there that we makes go. it way better. Did you get the model Which three? one did you get? Yes, model oh, three. Okay. How did you build it out? So we we <laughs> we we we're, we're really I'm in the game. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm ready to roll. we're looking I'm ready for some Tesla. We can insert a picture right here, but dude, yeah. I looked up all the Tesla videos. So actually, before buying my Tesla, uh, like three four years ago, I I got a paycheck, oh, like fifteen hundred bucks. I put that into Tesla stock. And then it, oh, it, it became worth like fifty thousand dollars. Oh my god! So yeah. I was like, I was like, shit, okay. I'm just gonna use that to buy a Tesla. That's yeah. great. Well, my friend bought a Black Magic Cinema camera with that money, and I bought t- like some Tesla shares, and boom, like Good my choice. Ba- my you you won off. that battle. Yeah. 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 yeah, He's still pulling focus like a dweeb. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're so, driving Tesla. So my whole theory is like, I'm gonna use that money to buy Tesla. I still have it in there, so I actually didn't do that, but mm. uh, I was planning on using that fund that I made. I was like, I was lucky with mm. this. I'm just gonna use that to buy the car. Um, but yeah, so with the car, I, you know, I tinted the windows, it's Smart. all black, Smart. white interior, oh. um, black rims, dude. Like I, I got like the, the upgrade rims and then I paid so 
want to powder coat them. Oh, nice. We got carbon fiber logos. Oh, sick. Um, we got acid green brake calipers. Did you go, oh, did nice. you go with the, the brake calipers? Yeah. Dude, that's the move. Upgrading oh, yeah. your brake calipers is like the coolest thing you can do. Yeah. Did you go long range or did you go performance or regular? Dude, I literally, so here's what I was I was thinking. Originally, I wanted a Model Y. I wanted to do mm-hmm. silver Model that's Y, right. black yeah. rims, yellow sick. calipers. Sick. Sick. I had the whole thing. about the calipers, dude. But then I was calculating the prices and I was looking at just everything. And, and I was like, well, if I do, get a Y, it's like 12000 more than the the three and then i thought well i live in uh, my my long-term goal is to get a cyber truck sure but i live in la right now and it's like it'd be huge here it's way too big it's, mm. and also like it's not going to come out for a few more years mm. and i was looking at you know when it first like announced so i don't know either way um so i decided long term it's probably best if i just got standard range for la because mm. like there's not many elements here right you know it's two-wheel drive but it's just almost as fast as the 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 performance it's just a little bit slower and i test drove both of them too to see like if there was a major difference mm. was anything off about the standard because i'd say myself like twelve thousand bucks right and uh, so i got that it's still it's, a it's, rocket it's, it's great it's yeah. still really fast it's so light right it's just such a light Dude, it's, car it's like it beat most cars in a drag yeah. race there's no torque like, yeah. yeah there's there's no, no there's exactly like but that's the thing i even raced my buddy in his model y dual motor versus just a single motor three and literally it's like the same for the first like four seconds and then and then they it, start it's, to it starts up. to slowly take mm-hmm. over but for me i'm like it's fast it's you know it's great and it has, does everything it needs to do mm-hmm. so right and the quality control is it's all the same that's beast so that's my car for now and then Inspire. yeah dude it, it does the job and then cyber truck you, and yeah, you might I you, love the you might have just convinced us really should, should we look again after well, dude, we looked the other day so expensive i know i dude. love my GPU. my check like, engine light mm, came on today i'm ready yeah. to just grab my car and put it in a ball and dude throw it. it's so doable too because like payment wise like upfront payment like normally like a lot of people what i'm doing is i'm financing so i put mm-hmm. down like pay for the taxes mm-hmm. up front mm-hmm. and then just pay monthly but it ends up being so worth it because you're not paying gas every month like i saw like a rolls royce um filling up at that eight dollar oh place my God. Fuck that. um oh and my I, God. I looked at it and i looked up like the the, the, the how big the tank yeah, was yeah. and i did the math and it was like 240 dollars oh to fill up God. its tank holy shit and dude. i was like well, you got to do premium yeah exactly yeah, it was yeah. like the premium plus or whatever and i was like okay well if these guys Obviously, they have a Rolls Royce. They yeah, can afford they can it. Afford it's not it, a big yeah. deal. But I was just thinking, like, people are spending upwards of like a hundred to two hundred dollars on a tank, where I'm spending ten dollars max, maybe six to ten bucks. So yeah, <laughs> it's saving in c- certain areas. One more question about Tesla: Do you have the Tesla insurance? Because I was reading about this dude. It literally docks you if you drive like an asshole. So I can't get the Tesla insurance. Oh, you couldn't get it. Then, I, no I'd be at a, you I, for sure. Could I, I would be at a. <laughs> is it out of a hundred? I'd be at a three in like we a get, week. We yeah. get texts saying like. Hey, you know your friend because he has his fucking name on his license plate, and yeah. they're like, "Hey, your friend Braden, like, cut me off." I gotta today. take that <laughs> off. I gotta yeah, take gotta, that off. His get, license plate says "Beef Eggy." Yeah, no, so yeah, it's getting bad. They're gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna get like a. They're yeah. like, yeah, we we uh, we've just gotten reports about yeah. it, man. Well, apparently, like the the full self driving beta, like you have to have like a very close to perfect score to even use the full full self driving oh, beta. Wow. And then there's like this other beta you can use, which is like anyone can have access to if you pay the monthly fee, um, but. For me, I I was looking at Tesla insurance and it's actually pretty expensive. It was mm. pretty pricey because mm. compared to this other one I found, um, so I just went with that one and it's still pricey. It's still like two hundred dollars a month, two twenty or something for the, just for the insurance cost. Um, but Tesla was quoting me like three hundred because I'm still young. I'm a, a male, and right. Yeah. Post pandemic, yeah, you moved back, yeah, and you. I know that you did a little stint with MGK on tour, yeah. So like shows came back after pandemic. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about how you got linked with MGK? I know it was through Sam. Yes, sir. Um, that stuff was and nuts. then like yeah, Sam yeah. KL, dude. Yeah. Um. So the whole story with that was pandemic's kind of coming to a close, but it's still prevalent, you know. So there's still masks everywhere. Um. Like you have to be vaccinated or have like a PCR test again these these shows. But um, my buddy Sam he has a fear of like getting his wisdom teeth removed and he had to get them removed. So oh, he was like a little scared, like, Oh, oh no, well, I had to get my teeth removed. I don't want to do it. So he kept delaying it. And then tour was coming up. So, you know, he's my boy and he was like, yo, like, I trust you. Do you mind covering for like two days on tour? And I was like, of course I'd love to. That's like, I look up to MGK. He's a sick artist. Mm-hmm. Like I love his style. And everything. Yeah, you guys kind of do mm-hmm. mesh. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. And it was a good time. So I, I went there and then I ended up staying for almost three weeks. I was supposed to be over two days, but we just meshed so well. And it was just, dude, it was like one of the highest highs of my life, yeah. but also one of like the lowest lows because oh. like I get there the first day and it's just like, there's just a lot of like stuff that was wrong with the set. And like, so Kells comes in and like, we just have to, 
you know, reorganize some things. And like, you know, I, it was my first time really meeting him. Like I met him once on a shoot, um, but it was pretty brief. But this time it was, you know, just a lot of stuff had to be done to make it, uh, to, you know, fulfill his vision. And like, cause he, he's so inspired by theater and he's very particular. And so, you know, the people just didn't quite, um, you know, they didn't fulfill his vision. So uh, we got everything sorted out and then we just started. It was just like, it was weird too. It was like travel, travel, travel no sleep mm. but then we get to this like arena and there's like so many people there there's to see him and like they're screaming and it's like you can hear the rumbling and the noise outside mm. when you're in the green room and it's like so exhilarating so you get the energy but you're just dead tired yeah, from the well, travel i was tired the because adrenaline. it was just not just travel but when we got there like the set wasn't right and like the set does like visuals there's a big led screen like huge in the back mm-hmm. and like the visuals weren't right and so um andre one of his managers is like yo kyle can you uh, you're good at video editing, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, can you edit these visuals for me? So like the first like week, I'm pulling all-nighters every night Shit. and then shooting all day. The all-nighters, I'm editing these tour visuals. So, th- which is, at the time, I was like, oh my God, this is so much work. But I also was like loving it. It was, it was amazing. Right, sure. um, and then, you know, a week of all-nighters later and then for a show, happens i'm shooting the show and i just see like my visuals that i made mm-hmm. up on the big screen oh god everyone's it's watching them and i was feeling. like dude i made a sick ufo for uh this this one song this and then i made dude like there's this i could maybe plop them up if i can find them but then there's like we have kells in the sun and he's like smoking some weed and like yeah. he's rising like uh, the teletubby sun and then going under like oh, the hills. Dope. oh that's sweet. And there's all these cool visuals that's and like fun. pete davidson skit and stuff that mm-hmm. edited wow up. how cool what did you so, what did you edit the visuals in i was just editing premiere and then i tossed them over to the visual team and they got it sorted out nice so yeah it was it was you know a lot of stress at first but it was so satisfying and right. you know the team was amazing um kells was amazing and you know, I'm just very thankful for Sam to have me on. And then, you know, a few days in, VMAs happen. There's all this stuff going on. And, you know, there was just, there was a lot going on. Every, when you're on tour, first of all, it's just a lot. And then when you're on tour with MGK, it's just even more. Right, Because like, imagine. he's so mm-hmm. loved and so hated by like everybody. Right. And so like, and he was also like, this was like, right when he's like really, really like the center of attention from every news outlet and mm-hmm. everything, his tours going on, his new, new albums, like his first tour for his new album that like f- took, I don't know, it's like a whole new trend, like the pop punk scene's mm-hmm. finally yeah. back. Right. Um, and he was kind of like the, like the head yeah, of yeah. spearheading it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was like him and Travis Barker. I feel right. like Travis Barker really has so much influence in that. Like if you look at like the credits of any of these pop punk songs it's with insane. him, Ian Dior, Kid Leroy, anyone, mm-hmm. um, it's literally all Travis Barker produced. Um, oh, or wow. drummed on so okay. Dude, he's, he's a the, legend he's the fuck i remember i saw blink 182 in like fucking eighth grade and he was like on this floating stage like spinning around he's still drumming and i was like that he was like my yeah. fucking hero for like four years you know dude. it was a full circle moment too like before all this even happened it was funny because i remember, i didn't even know it's like three years ago but i looked at who followed me on instagram and i saw like tom DeLong. oh sick. He, he was following me for a while sick. From, i think from my nature days Really? So wow. kind of funny. Blink one eighty two. He's probably probably trying to find aliens in in your shots, man. Did I you, know. Right? Did you see that? Thing? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. So, yeah. he, um, so he's like a huge. So he left. He's the lead singer of uh, Blink one eighty two. Left Blink one eighty two to pursue just finding aliens. Just yeah. obsessed with aliens. Really. And they have a song called Aliens Exist, and about him like getting abducted. And now people oh, are like, shit. is that like real life? Like, did that happen to him? And that's why he's obsessed with it. Yeah. And then when Hillary Clinton's emails got leaked or whatever, and they like let him out to the public for the the mm. election, <laughs> there are all these emails from Tom DeLong being like we gotta fucking find the aliens <laughs> <laughs> it was That's awesome great. dude he's like my favorite I love that guy oh That's yeah funny. dude it's, uh, is it Bob Lazar is also one of the uh, the leading yeah leading yeah, alien yeah. fellows yeah cause I've seen, I watch a lot of Joe Rogan they're always talking about Mr. Mm-hmm. Lazar mm-hmm. Um, so yeah and then yeah lo- then moving forward then I made the big this big UFO tractor beam mm. um, visual for MGK's tour so that was awesome okay well hold on yeah well, wait we gotta back up to the VMAs, the VMA. yeah. okay yeah what the that's heck? a moment that's it, for yeah, sure for, for yeah. it's iconic and I think it's just burned into the photo yeah the burned photo into society took. yeah this yeah. photo yeah. that you took talk like, me through talk me through just okay what did, what did you bring 
to shoot with. Yeah. yeah. yeah talk me through like, the you, whole setup yeah, of that yeah, shot. What, yeah, talk me through the and setup. And we should plop that shot up. Yeah, we should plop that shot up. You gotta plop the shot up. I brought just my super zoom camera. That, no, kidding. So I shoot on the 1DX Mark II, so that's my go to. 24 to 70 lens, dude. Swiss Army knife. Yeah. But you could shoot, I mean, that photo is simple photo, but I'll explain the whole night. So, and describe the photo too. Yeah. Okay. So you can. I'll start. I'll start it. with the the whole experience. So, what were you wearing? <laughs> yeah, I was just wearing like this one piece, dude. It was nice. Crazy. Okay. So we go to the Barclay Center um, mm. before the VMAs a few days earlier, just to scout everything and do a rehearsal. You know, um, and it was really cool. They were doing paper cuts, and it was the first time live. He had this new verse, uh, rap verse on it, and it was really cool. So film the rehearsal, and then go do some shows, come back, and it's VMA time. Do they say it's VMA time when it oh, starts? Yeah, okay, it's cool. VMA time. Nice, nice. So, um, okay, point. so when we're in when we're in Brooklyn, um, the day before VMAs, uh, Kells and Megan are like, hey, like we want to take this photo like on the street somewhere. It's going to be like her in this like see-through dress. And then uh, he wanted to have like, she wanted to have a choker on and a collar and he was going to hold it. Mm. And they're like, yeah, like we'll let you know when we're ready to take it, we'll go do it. It never ended up happening. We were just so busy and stuff. So then fast forward, we're at the VMAs um, and they're wearing their red carpet outfits and they look amazing, hair, makeup, everything's done and they're styled so well. And so they just say, yo, Kyle, can you come back here real quick? And we go back in the bathroom. Yeah, there's like this urinals and he's, he's like, yo, can you just take a picture of us here? Like that photo we were talking about. Mm. So I get my camera, my flash ready and take the picture and then yeah it was like it was fun i was like telling them all right now look at me okay now mm -hmm. look at each other now kiss blah blah blah. and then um it was funny too because there's like x's across the urinals like don't piss in these mm -hmm. urinals and i was like should i take these off like i'm gonna take them off he's like no don't take that off that's sick as fuck <laughs> See, that's like little <laughs> details, details. Though, that, like i think like sometimes i think maybe go for like a, a clean aesthetically sure. pleasing image he's more like well why it's kind of cool like they Keep put that there it's mm. dirty like leave it mm. so Took that picture and then we're we kind of done we're done for a second and then uh travis barker and courtney kardashian just walk in prancing around talking <laughs> no like, oh sick there's a kardashian dope uh. um and then we're just hanging and then he's like yo come back again so we go in there and we take the photo again uh the couple picture with both of them mm -hmm. and then you know i'm just capturing them and bts shots and then also we did the posed one there and then yeah those photos ended up getting posted on social media and they went crazy like bro, Dumb, the yeah, Dummy yeah, viral. and the funny thing too is at first like there was no like tag for me yeah. or anything so like no one knew that i took them and so for the first like 12 hours like nothing you know i just mm -hmm. thought it was epic and then they were right. popping off mm -hmm. everyone was reposting their stories and then i got tagged in there finally and, and then the credit that i feel like was deserved and everything you know and it uh it was awesome it really helped me out too like i had a lot of like news articles reaching out and um, a lot of friends were like, whoa, like you took that? Like, That's I didn't even sick. realize. What That's the awesome. fuck? And it, now it seems to be like, it'll be one of the more iconic images of this time period in life. You yeah, know, like, which is cool. Which is fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. What is, okay. Super lucky for that. What is Megan Fox like? I mean, I grew up in Transformers, you know. And she I, is I, bad in person. Everyone, <laughs> every, everyone from my high school was like, we all went to Transformers together. We oh, all yeah. freaked out when yeah. Megan Fox on screen and then Transformers 2 and she's on the bike and it oh, starts yeah. everyone... What did you met her? Dude. Yeah, I saw Transformers as well. I, I remember that scene. <laughs> you know, yeah. I thought it was awesome. And so yeah, meeting her in real life, it was it was one of those things where I was like so stimulated by tour mm -hmm. and like just doing so much. And like I knew that they were together and stuff. So when I saw her, I'm like, oh hi Megan, what's up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was just like she was just always there, you know, being supportive. Mm -hmm. She has her own things too, you know. Mm -hmm. She's a, a boss woman herself. Mm -hmm. Um. So you know, she would come when she could and spend that time with him. And I feel like she's really good at um, soothing him and calming him down because, mm. you know, he's going through so much, mm -hmm. so right. much stuff and stimulants. And so I feel like uh, they're really good together and, you know, just it's good, good time. That's awesome. Well, that's so also cool. crazy because being on tour and performing in front of that many people, like that is, I don't know if there's a more exhilarating yeah. feeling than doing that. So like, yeah. it's got to be nice to have a girl like that that can kind of just like hold you down. Like, especially he's like, just so well known, so mm -hmm. hectic, right. like on tour, mm -hmm. then VMAs, all this kind yeah. of stuff going on. Like, and then like the even uh, Conor McGregor fight thing happened. Yeah, at VMAs wait, too. that was wild. Yeah. Holy shit, that was yeah. that night. So that was it was hard too, like to balance, like you know, mentally. If you can, you can only imagine like balancing 
the physical stress, the mental stress from that, like, and then his girlfriend's right here, and then Connor's trying to fight him, and then he has to go perform like twenty minutes later at the VMA. on on at the VMAs on stage and like pretend like everything's all good, yeah, and then wins a VMA and everything, and so it's like so many emotions, like winning this like this dream he's had for so long, and then you know also like getting into altercation with this with Connor and stuff, and it's just a lot, you know. There's so many ups and downs and stimulants and. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, it's weird. It's it's one of those things too, where like, you know, if you want, if would you get that amount of fame and notoriety, it's like you never want to give that up. But at the same time, there's so many like negatives that people don't understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's so many pros to it. So many like you like not many people will trade that. But there's also a lot of shit people don't see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's crazy to think about right now with your career, right? Where do you want to see it go? And like you're, you've talked about how you've experimented just a ton. And I mean, I think that's that's really cool. And I don't think a lot of people do that. I think a lot of people get stuck in the same, the same just rabbit wheel. You know, yeah. talk to me about how you've continued to innovate and kind of where your plans are for this the rest of this year. Yeah, um, that's tough. You know, I've I've been thinking about that a lot lately because mm. um, I feel like, you know, I broke my foot in January. Um, it was, it was funny because fast forward before that, I just started this, uh, new diet 75 hard where I was trying oh, to like, I tough. was trying to cut back in cause I feel like I've kind of let myself go a little bit during COVID. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to get back in shape and then 20 days in boom broke, like shattered my big toe oh. and I'm out fully out. Like Man. and the littlest things that were just like so easy, like folding my laundry and putting up in my closet now was like so hard and such a like task for like a week or two. And then over time it got slightly easier, but now, you know, we're month three and I feel like I finally am almost normal. Sure. And I'm finally getting back to the rhythm of, you know, doing some of these trips and commercials and stuff. And I really just want to just, you know, use this year to, uh, I don't know, to, to its most does that make sense like sure, i want to i want to do as much as i can but also i feel like i'm almost at this point overworking myself because i you know, i was just in hawaii and i had a broken foot and i'm still doing hikes and manta ray snorkeling mm, and stuff mm. and then i go to catch my drone and like slice my fingers open it's gushing blood everywhere oh and then just had a stomach bug three week days ago and i was like uh, in bed f- up until today like feeling we like appreciate you coming trash. on yeah. We, yeah. we know I feel amazing yeah. now you do this makes me feel better being here oh, yeah. um, That's and i got dude i got i got some i can get you some stuff dude oh, yes, i got sir. right in that cover Oh yeah, I got that Pepto. Oh, yeah, that do I got activated Jeez. charcoal. I got all. See, the that's shit, what I like bro. to see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so some people are saying, "Oh, you're doing too much," but I feel like I'm not doing enough. And especially when I see people like MGK, who are like doing mm. so, so, so much, mm. and like it's showing now. But even them, they've been doing that that much for ten years, and now it's finally, finally, finally yeah. like paying off. Um, so yeah, I just want to. I want to. I keep saying I want to do certain things. Like I have a clothing line. I've been in the back end that I've been working on for a while, but. I haven't been, you know, putting enough time into. So this is almost like a, uh, you know, it's on the internet now. So I have to do it. You know? mm, yeah. Um, yeah. So I just really want to do a lot as much as I can stay creative, um, shoot more. And, you know, I just want to just stay happy. It's yeah. easy too to get over consumed with the work and then like make money and then you're not enjoying it. So yeah. How do you find yeah. that balance of like, how often are you shooting for fun? I, how often are you shooting for fun? How often are you shooting for clients? Like how often are you doing stuff that doesn't relate to work like do you have hobbies that you like i know you have a ton of hobbies because you're just mad Mm -hmm. creative so like like talk to me a little bit about how you kind of deal with like either feeling overwhelmed with work and like finding that balance yeah um i go in waves as most creatives do you know it's like you're gonna i don't know you find inspiration Mm -hmm. sometimes and you want to just like Mm -hmm. create 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 and then eventually if you hit a roadblock or something bad happens in life and you're just like take it take a chill pill and you just hang out and then it's easy to just watch netflix all day for a month and then you're like what am i doing Mm -hmm. so that's like my broken leg kind of did that to me um but i feel like fine like i'm back with that um but at one point like i was posting like every day on instagram last year um i went on this guatemala trip with some of my buddies to explore volcanoes yeah dude that show i remember yeah and we ride up on the lava and from then on like I just was like, I just got to post every day, every day. And then we did like this theme. I started doing theme shoots. Like I did a matrix photo shoot and then like a Prometheus shoot. And I had like a board of all these shoots, like inspired by movies that I was going to do. And I still have not done a lot of them, you Mm. know? But, um, so there's times where it's like constant, constant, or even on tour or Mm. whatever. But then there's also tons of moments where I'm just not, you know, and it's just, it's a weird balance. And I think it's easy to you know it's it's easy to like not treat this job as like a nine to five Mm -hmm. because it's like based on creativity Mm -hmm. but i think it's almost smart and healthy to like really if you want to make the most out of it um just grind and like you know clock in 
like go do your morning workout or whatever and then like from there on go do your emails put in your hours and then clock out when you're, mm-hmm. when totally. you're done like on that. your on your own schedule but like if you don't do that you're not going to get anywhere find a routine yeah. yeah and i think we struggle with that like we always oh, just God. like work at the randomest hour. like i i know my buddies i asked them like what are the what do you guys do like after like dinner and they're like oh we like watch movies we just like edit and yeah shit. we just edit <laughs> stuff like all night right yeah. last night you came out and i was just still in the lab right you know We're, right but that's that's a struggle too though is like i've met my, my dad has been very like on the dot airline pilot mm-hmm. take notes everything pay the bills at this certain time like early like mm-hmm. a month ahead <laughs> like don't ever like break any rules you know where i'm more like try to do risk-taking things like mm-hmm. go to guatemala to explore a volcano like i right. said or like just random things like in high school going to a random country without my parents when i'm still like right. like underage and stuff and like little things like that or not going to college um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just taking those little jumps i feel like and even like scheduling like i'm not my brain doesn't work that good with like a solid routine. Mm. I feel like a lot of people like they like the routine, but there's also so many people, especially creatives who fucking hate mm-hmm. routines. Yeah. Um, so that's weird. That's why 75 hard was kind of helping me with like finding that balance mm-hmm. of like forcing myself to like read a book every day and mm-hmm. work yeah. out twice a day and everything. So you got to do what works with you for you. But um, at the same time, like you do want to make sure you're being productive. Casey Neistat also has like this video, seven second video or something. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, where he's yeah. in the airport, oh, yeah. like yeah. the flat escalator and he's, what's the analogy? It's something about like going, uh, oh, oh my God, going. F- you're walking backwards on the escalator. And if you're, if you're, um, if you don't, if you're walking, right, you're just going to stay still. Yeah. If you're just coasting through life, you're not going to move forward. The only way to move forward is by running and sprinting. Mm-hmm. You got it. I was going to look at so it, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Do you, so going, kind of going off that, do you have any advice for creators that are trying to get started in the mm-hmm. space? Yeah. I would say just give up now. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> clip it. <laughs> dude, just make stuff that you like, like literally just, that's what I did. I just, I, I found inspiration from these people I looked up to and mm-hmm. I was like, that's so cool. And I would literally just, I would almost like try to like copy it and like make a similar video, but like with my own twist, like, Mm -hmm. and you know, it was looking back, it was way crappier than theirs, obviously. Like there's a reason there's, um, got more attention. Not necessarily though, too, because like you can start and have amazing content and then like no one sees it and it just takes time, Mm -hmm. persistence. So I would say, you know, uh, if you actually love creating, just create and then be persistent and don't stop. And like, don't look at it for the numbers. I know it's easy to say that because like I would even say don't look at it for the numbers. But then once I start seeing the numbers, I was so stoked. Mm-hmm. And then once I stop seeing those at some points, I would be sad. And then when they come back, I'm happy again. Like it's a weird toxic thing. Mm-hmm. But really just don't let that fuel you. I would say just you want to be happy with what you make. And uh, eventually people will come to see that what you're making is sick too. Um, and yeah. One thing I really do admire about you is the fact that you'll plan out these like elaborate shoots i think that's yeah, so sick. fucking cool like yeah, it's you'll find some inspiration be like i want to do a fucking like, shoot like for passion based, yeah yeah based it's on dope. a movie and like yeah. we're gonna go execute it I but would, like at a high level i always tell people Thanks, what, like the free shoots made me the most money because mm-hmm. like, totally. you know what i'm saying if you yeah. do stuff that you're passionate about like people will see that and be like yo this you did this right. like they don't yeah. even need to know who it was for They're like i just saw this and i want to pay you to do something like similar yeah. to that that's actually so so true too and that's I'm happy you brought that up because like even like the matrix shoot I did Mm -hmm. literally just like that cost me quite a bit of money and like or even like music videos like I've made some songs and the music videos cost Mm -hmm. like cost quite a bit yeah but it's like investing into myself where I could be buying clothes or Mm -hmm. whatever go to H&M and ball out yeah exactly (laughs) ball out H&M dude it's like 200 bucks dude (laughs) you get the whole store for 200 bucks oh yeah but that means I don't know dude it's like you need to invest in yourself and like you don't have to buy the nicest camera like nowadays you can buy a 20 dollar film camera and take like the sickest photos mm-hmm. ever like so many people people i follow who are doing so well now have just a crappy film camera and it looks so sick mm-hmm. and like they, it's i don't know lots of it's about capturing that vibe in that moment um and so even yeah with the like the theme shoots i would say just you know if you have an idea just run with it fully i think it's easy to be kind of lazy too like for me there's a period even now or sometimes i'll just go somewhere take a sunset picture and oh it's cool and it looks vibey but i'm gonna look at it like what makes this cool like would a, right. would a stranger actually like this or is it just like a segly pleasing and kind of sick so and like when i do that it can be cool to like fill the feed and everything and just constantly be posting but it's cool to take a step back sometimes and like really work on a concept that makes you like uh, creatively satisfied and then push that out and you'll it'll be worth it later for and that's how you get better too yeah. just like by practicing trying new concepts yeah. One last thing I wanted to talk about is like no. 
<laughs> all right, well, not. okay, and that's... Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> that's all No, but you say, like, you could take a really cool photo on, like, a $20 film camera. You yeah. just did a campaign with Charlie and Dixie, yeah. and you shot that on an iPhone. Yeah. Like, you don't need mm-hmm. a fancy... Like, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. They're some of the biggest influencers You told people that, like, 40 years ago, they'd be like, no chance. Yeah. Not no, possible. No chance. You yeah, know? dude, literally, Hollister hit me up, and I, I've done a few campaigns with them now, and um, with Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio, and they're like... Yo, this time we we had you do camera like every time, but this time we were we're going with the new age vibe. Can you just use iPhone and film? Mm. And I was like, wait, you don't want me to even bring my camera? Like they're like, no, don't even bring it. Mm. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, yeah. there's no editing for me in the back end, really. Like it's a lot easier. So I'm, I was stoked. It was a challenge, and it was it was fun too because I feel like I've kind of like I take pride in my like my iPhone video and photo skills and yeah. like even mm-hmm. on tour with MGK and stuff I feel like I was taking these cool like wide angle videos swooping yeah, you around. You ripped the wide angle bro. I, I love dude, that shit. That's the hack if anyone that needs is. to know it looks the sick. wide angle right. video right. is you do it for stories and then also yeah a nice filter on there. Mm. Nothing too crazy but like mm. make it a little Just, more yeah. contrasty change the hues a little bit and boom wide Bang. angle. So you because you can't you can't yeah. record on Instagram wide angle. Do you so you film it on your phone right into the regular camera well, wide angle? Yes but you can record yeah, wide you can't record yeah. on, you just yeah, pinch. Zoom out. You didn't know that? No. I remember the first I mean, time I, I opened got, Instagram app. I just got I just got yeah. 11 Pro Max for the first time. I had it's like it's actually it's before. a 13 is what you bought. It's not yeah. an 11. 11 oh, 13 11 is just like from like 10 That's like the old Razor. I just said give me the nice one. I, didn't know over okay. there, dude. I just said, which, which one is the sickest? And just give me that one. I don't so care Jace what number it is. Jace finally bought into the wave of getting nice shit. And yeah. I'm really happy about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm really happy about Little it. Little things can make a big difference, dude. It's like, you know, have like when sometimes it depends on the person there and your career and your mm-hmm. job. But like as a photographer and stuff, it's nice to have something that can just, you know, help you out. A tool, mm-hmm. I guess you could well, say. I just got a 70 to 200 and I'm really excited because nice. that opens up a whole new door of like right. shots that I can now mm-hmm. get way mm-hmm. more compressed. So I'm excited to try that and out. That's something I still have yet to get. My mom has that. I've never had that. And, but I'm envious of you and I, it's something I should have invested in. And I just still haven't because uh-huh. it's so big, you know, you're on the EF mount. I, I am. Yeah. You just, did you just borrow one of ours? Dude. No worries. Yeah, much. There it is. You guys want the Nikon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll do a little swap, yeah, dude. We'll I, mean, swap I could go or... to the moon craters. So <laughs> mine might have you beat. <laughs> So. Guys, that was um, that was incredible. I think that people are going to get a ton of value from this. I'm really happy that you came on and yeah, you're dude, feeling thank better you. now. Thanks, mm-hmm. guys. Where Absolutely. can where can the people find you and where do you want them to check out? Um, my Instagram is Kyle Hauk. Spell it. K Y L E H O U C K. There it is. Um, and then yeah, you know, uh, I used to do TikTok, not really, but Instagram is my main platform. My, my website's not updated, guys. So what was what was the website that. that you had back in the day? Yeah, check that one out. Bl- oh. uh, Black Ice oh. Productions. <laughs> no, dude, oh. Yeah, don't yeah. look up Black Ice Productions. And the girlfriend from high school has put her Instagram below and just <laughs> slam her. Absolutely slam not. Her in the look at me yeah. now, bitch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah it, is, it just, you know, it's just funny how the, the, the world works, you know? And right. like, it's, it's funny too, how like full circle everything can be. Even with my teacher back in high school who was like telling me like, you, you shouldn't do this kind of, and then now it's like my career and it's mm-hmm. it's totally. just cool never let anyone tell you no don't oh, yeah. listen to no dude even if your parents like don't do this dude just fucking do it i love do it, it. i love it ladies and gentlemen thank you for coming back to another episode of the 505 podcast if you're still here please screenshot it drop a little story up for the boys tag all of us and we'll see you guys all next week peace peace, peace.